Take a look at this website. For the past few months, I have had a bunch of members from both our pro and community Discord servers share this site with me, asking if I could break down some of the animations featured on it. At first, I kind of just skimmed through it and didn't explore it properly because the opening sections had animations that felt familiar, pretty similar to concepts we have already covered here on the channel. But last week, while hunting for a new video idea, I decided to explore the full site and that's when I came across this amazing section. It features this vertical scroll where the titles glide through a clipped window, the background image updates dynamically and these floating thumbnails move along a curved path from top to bottom. This was something new and I was instantly hooked. We haven't built anything quite like this before, so I figured it would be a fun challenge to try replicating it. And after spending a solid number of hours on it, I managed to put together a pretty close version of that scroll animation using GSAP and scroll trigger. Honestly, I didn't expect it to be this complex. Once I got into it, I realized the trickiest part was getting the images to move smoothly along that curved path as you scroll. That motion took the longest to figure out. But in this video, I'll walk you through everything, how the layout works, how the animations are sequenced, and how to keep it fully customizable for your own projects. I also made sure the layout holds up well on smaller screens without compromising the key scroll animations. If you find my work helpful, I would really appreciate a like on the video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more award-winning site breakdowns like this. And if you want to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. All right, let's get into it. We'll start by setting up the basic HTML structure. The layout is split into three main sections, an intro, a spotlight section in the middle, and an outro to close things off. The spotlight is where all the animation will happen, but I'll add the intro and outro sections just to give the layout some structure and breathing room. They are pretty simple, just an H1 in each, so the top and bottom of the page don't feel empty. You can skip them if you want, they are not connected to any of the animations we are building. Now let's get into the main spotlight section. The first thing I'll add here is a text wrapper called Spotlight Intro Text Wrapper. Inside that, I'll place two paragraph elements, each inside its own Spotlight Intro Text Div. These will slide outward in opposite directions when the scroll begins, right before the background scaling effect kicks in. Next, I'll add the background image container. This will have a class of Spotlight Background Image and I'll insert an image inside it. It's the first image we see by default before any transitions start. After that, we'll create the Titles container. I'll call it Spotlight Titles container and inside it, we'll place a Spotlight Titles wrapper. This is where we'll dynamically inject all the titles using JavaScript. Each one will be an H1 element from our array. Then, we'll add a container for the thumbnail images that animate along a curve as you scroll. I am calling the Spotlight Images. We'll also generate these dynamically and position them with GSAP as the scroll progresses. And finally, I'll add a Spotlight Header just to anchor the layout visually. It holds a simple paragraph and stays fixed to the side as the title scroll passed in the center, like you saw in the demo. That's all we need for the HTML. Now we'll move on to the CSS and start styling everything into place. We'll start with a basic reset, removing default spacing and setting up consistent box sizing across all elements. Then I'll set the base font for the site. I'm using a clean new Montreal typeface to match the minimal style. For the images, I'll make sure they fully cover their containers without stretching or squishing. Next, I'll style the H1 and paragraph text. The headings are made large and bold with tight line spacing, and the paragraphs are styled smaller but still strong and readable. Now onto the layout sections. Each section takes up the full viewport in both width and height with overflow hidden and relative positioning so we can layer things on top easily. For the intro and outro sections, I'll center the content both vertically and horizontally using Flexbox. They have a dark background with white text just to keep the focus on the main animation section in the middle. Now we'll style the intro text inside the spotlight section. The wrapper is centered vertically in the screen and laid out in a row with a small gap between the text blocks. Each text block takes up equal space and we'll use will change to optimize for upcoming animations. For the first text block, I'll align it to the right so both elements push away from each other when the animation starts. Now onto the background image. It's absolutely positioned and scaled down initially, we'll animate it later on scroll, so we are also optimizing this one with will change. Inside it, the image itself is scaled up slightly to create a nice zoom out effect when the animation plays. Now comes the titles container. It's absolutely positioned and clipped into a diagonal shape using a custom polygon mask. This creates that sliced lens effect as the titles scroll through. 
I am also defining two custom opacity variables here. We'll use those later to animate in some decorative lines. Those lines are added with pseudo elements, one at the top, one at the bottom, rotated diagonally and placed using transforms. They are set to fade in and out smoothly using a transition. Inside the titles container, we have the actual list of titles. This section is pushed down by default and will animate it upward as the user scrolls. It's set up as a vertical column with spacing between each item and pushed slightly to the left so it's not centered. The titles themselves are slightly transparent by default, will fade in the active one as it scrolls to the center. Next up is the image container for the floating thumbnails. It's positioned on the top right and sized to take up half of the screen. We are disabling pointer events here since these images are purely decorative and we don't want any accidental interaction. Each individual thumbnail is absolutely positioned and has a fixed size. We'll be animating them on a curve so again we are using wheel change to help with performance. Now for the small side header, it's vertically centered and pushed off to the left. We'll fade this in during scroll once the intro text moves out. It's set to be above the background and responds to opacity changes with a smooth transition. Finally, we'll add some responsive tweaks for smaller screens. I'm reducing the heading size and adding padding to the intro and outro sections so they stay readable. We'll also remove the clipping effect and decorative lines entirely for mobile and reset the title element to the left. And since the layout gets tighter on smaller screens, we are hiding the side header too. That's it for the styling. Next, we'll move on to JavaScript and set up the actual animations. Let's start with the basics. First, I'm importing GSAP along with its scroll trigger plugin and also Lannis for smooth scrolling. Then, I'm registering scroll trigger so we can use it later for scroll based animations. After that, I'm setting up a small config object. This holds a few values we'll use for timing and motion. The gap defines how far apart the floating images should animate from each other on scroll. Speed controls how fast each image completes its movement through the arc. An arc radius will define the curve they travel on. We'll use this to calculate the Bezier path later. Next, I'm pasting an array of spotlight items. Each object here has a name and an image path. We'll use this data to dynamically generate both the titles and the floating thumbnails. Next, we'll initialize Lennis. This handles smooth scrolling on the page. We are telling it to update scroll trigger whenever a scroll event occurs and we hook it into gsap trigger to keep everything in sync with the animation loop. You can find this block of code on the documentation. Next, we'll start querying the elements we need from the DOM. We are selecting the container where all the spotlight titles will be injected, the container for the floating images and also the side header that fades in during scroll. I'm also grabbing the full wrapper that clips the titles. We'll use this later to toggle waterline opacity with CSS variables. Then we target the two intro text elements that animate outward at the beginning of the scroll. Finally, I'm creating an empty array to hold all the image elements we are going to generate in the next step. Now that we have defined our array and selected the DOM elements, we'll go ahead and generate the titles and thumbnails dynamically using JavaScript. So I'll loop through the spotlight items array. This is the list of data we set earlier that contains the name and image for each spotlight block. Inside the loop, for each item, I'm creating a new heading element and assigning the name as its text content. We are doing this dynamically so that later if you want to add or remove items from the array, you don't need to touch HTML, everything updates automatically. I'm also setting the first item's opacity to full. This is just a visual touch. We want the first title to be fully visible when the scroll begins, while the rest stay faded until the animate into view. Once the title is set up, we append it to the container. Then we do something similar for the floating image. I am creating a wrapper div, giving it a class name so we can animate it later, and then placing an image element inside with the source pulled from our array. We append this wrapper into the image container and also push it into a local array called image elements. We'll use this list later when animating the thumbnails along a curve during scroll. Next, I'm grabbing all the title elements we just added using query selector all. We'll use this node list to control their opacity dynamically as we scroll through the section. Then, I'm setting up a variable to keep track of which title is currently active. This helps us avoid reapplying styles unnecessarily if the visible title hasn't changed. Now, we'll move on to defining the parameters for the curved motion. We want each floating image to move along a vertical arc as we scroll. To do that, we'll simulate a quadratic Bezier curve, which is basically a smooth curve defined by a start point and end point 
and a single control point that pulls the path outward. Let's define the positions first. We'll calculate the usable width of the image container. In this case, I'm taking 30% of the viewport width and storing it. Then we get the viewport height. From there, we define our start and end coordinates for the arc. The arc starts above the screen and ends below the screen, which allows the thumbnails to flow from top to bottom as you scroll. The control point is what gives the curve its roundness. Here I'm pushing it out to the right based on the arc radius value we set earlier in the config. The Y value for the control point is set to the vertical center of the screen so it pulls the arc outward horizontally but keeps the middle point balanced vertically. Now we'll define a function to calculate the Bezier position based on progress. The get Bezier position function takes in a T value that's just a number between 0 and 1 that represents scroll progress for a specific image. Inside the function, we are using the standard quadratic Bezier formula to calculate the x and y position of the point at that progress value. This is a well-known pattern and you can find this exact formula in places like MDN or CodePen if you ever want to look it up. Basically, what it's doing is interpolating between the start, control and end points to give us a smooth position at any point along the curve. So once we pass in a value between 0 and 1, we get back an x and y coordinate that we can use to position the image dynamically during scroll. This is what creates that elegant curved floating effect you saw earlier. And that sets us up for the next step, animating these positions in real time as the user scrolls. Now let's set up a utility function that determines when each floating image should appear along the scroll. This function is called getImageProgressState and it takes in two values, the index of the image and the overall scroll progress of the section. The idea here is to control the timing of each image animation based on its position in the array so they don't all animate at once. First, we calculate the start and end points for that particular image's animation range. We are using the index and multiplying it by the gap value we defined earlier in the config. This triggers each image slightly apart on the scroll timeline. Then, we add the speed value to get the end point. This defines how long the image should stay visible and animate along the arc. Now, based on the scroll progress, we return different values depending on whether the image should be off animating or already done animating. If the scroll is before its start point, we return minus 1. If it's after the end point, we return 2. And if it falls somewhere in between, we calculate a normalized progress between 0 and 1. We'll use this normalized value to find the image's position on the Bezier path during the scroll. This function gives us full control over when each image appears and for how long it travels on the screen. Now that we have defined the logic, I'll hide all the images initially by setting their opacity to 0. This gives us a clean base state before scroll animations start triggering. Next, we'll set up our scroll trigger. This is what controls the entire scroll based experience inside the spotlight section. So we are targeting the spotlight container as the scroll trigger. We pin it in place, meaning the rest of the page will scroll past it, but this section stays fixed while its internal animations play out. We are setting the scroll range to 10 times the height of the viewport, which gives us enough vertical space to reveal all the titles and animate the floating images. We'll also enable pin spacing so the layout doesn't break when this section gets pinned. Finally, we set scrub to 1, which links the animation timeline to the scroll position and adds a bit of smoothing. This makes the movement feel much more fluid and tied to the user scrolling behavior in real time. And with that, we have got our trigger set up and ready to animate the visuals based on scroll progress. Now inside the scroll trigger, we'll define the onUpdate callback. This is where all the real-time animation logic happens. It's going to run continuously as the user scrolls through the spotlight section. The first thing we do is to grab the scroll progress using self.progress. This gives us a value between 0 and 1, representing how far we have scrolled through the spin section. Now let's break the scroll into different segments and start with the first one. When the scroll progress is between 0 and 0.2, we are in the intro animation phase. In this part, we want to animate the two intro text blocks, the ones on either side of the spotlight section, and also scale in the background image. To do that, I am calculating a new variable called animation progress. This just normalizes the scroll progress within this segment. So we get a value from 0 to 1 as we scroll from start to 20%. Then I define how far the intro texts should move. I am multiplying the screen width by a constant to determine how much they'll push outward horizontally. We animate one text to the left and the other to the right, creating the classic opening split effect. At the same time, I am making sure both text blocks are fully visible by setting the opacity to 1 just to be safe in case we are scrubbing back and forth quickly. Then we handle the background image. We scale in the entire background container from 0 to full size as the scroll progresses and inside it, we scale the image from a zoomed in state back to normal creating a cool parallax effect. This adds depth to the intro. 
We also make sure all the floating thumbnails are hidden in this phase by looping through them and setting their opacity to zero. They don't appear until later. And finally, I'm hiding the side header by setting its opacity to zero and making sure the diagonal lines, the ones on top and bottom of the title's container are also hidden. We do that by setting two CSS variables to control their opacity. So in short, the first segment is all about revealing the intro, scaling in the background and setting the stage for the scroll experience. Now let's move into the next segment. This is where all the animation happens. When this scroll progress is between 25% and 95%, we are in the active animation range. At this point, the intro animation is done, so I'll reset a few things to make sure we are working with a clean visual state. We keep the background image scaled normally and we make sure the intro texts are hidden. We also fade in the side header and the decorative lines, those diagonal strokes at the top and bottom of the titles container. Now the real scroll animation begins. To animate the titles and thumbnails, I first calculate a normalized value called switch progress. This tells us how far we have scrolled within just this middle segment, ranging again from 0 to 1. Next, I calculate how far the entire titles container needs to move vertically. So here is the logic. The starting point is the bottom of the screen. The end point is the full height of the titles container moved all the way up so we scroll it out completely. By subtracting the target from the start, I get the total distance it needs to travel. Then I multiply that distance by the scroll progress and subtract it from the starting position. That gives us the current Y position for the container which we then animate using GSAP. As you scroll, this smoothly moves the entire title stack upward through the clipped window. Now let's talk about the floating images. For each thumbnail, I calculate its individual scroll timing using the get image progress state function we wrote earlier. This helps us figure out if the image should be hidden, animating or already done animating based on its index and the overall scroll progress. If an image falls outside its active range, I hide it by setting opacity to zero. But if it's currently animating, I calculate its position on the Bezier curve using the function from earlier. That gives us an X and Y value for that point on the arc, which will apply to position the image. I offset the result slightly, so the image is centered on the curved path. That's why you see minus 100 and minus 75 adjustments. This creates that signature visual where images rise and fall on an arc as you scroll through the section. Now, as we are animating the titles and images, we also want to highlight the title that's closest to the center of the screen. To do that, I calculate the center of the viewport and then loop through all the titles. For each one, I get its position on screen and calculate how far its center is from the middle of the viewport. I keep track of the one with the smallest distance, which means it's the most centered. If this closest title is different from the one that was previously active, we update a few things. We reduce the opacity of the old active title, we set the new one to full opacity. And we also update the background image to match the new title. That way, everything stays in sync, the text, the background and the floating images all update together as you scroll. Then, finally once the scroll progress is 95%, we consider the animation complete. At this point, I fade out the side header and the decorative lines again to close the sequence. So that's the full scroll driven spotlight animation. Everything is connected, title movement, image motion, background switching and active state tracking all tied to your scroll progress. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.